The nearest neighbor algorithm is arguably the simplest single object tracking algorithm. In spite of its simplicity, it performs comparable to more advanced algorithms in simple scenarios. In this video, we introduce this algorithm and explain some of its properties. Since both nearest neighbor and probabilistic data association end every recursion by approximating the posterior density as Gaussian, we always start the next recursion by assuming that the posterior at the previous time is Gaussian. For simplicity, we here assume that the motion model is linear and Gaussian. It therefore follows that the predicted density is also linear and Gaussian, and we have closed form expressions for the first two moments of the predicted density. Note that we can handle nonlinear motion models by approximating the predicted density as Gaussian, for instance, using an extended comma filter. We would like to be able to compare how different algorithms approximate the posterior density. We therefore sometimes use the superscript nn when the approximation to the posterior density is computed using the nearest neighbor algorithm. To obtain simple expressions for the posterior at time k, we assume that the probability of detection is constant and that the object likelihood gk is linear and Gaussian. As before, we obtain simple expressions even if the clutter intensity lambda c is a nonlinear function of z. We can now express the posterior density under the assumption that the predicted density computed by the nearest neighbor algorithm is the true predicted density. Note that this is the standard approach in assumed density filtering. Once we have introduced the approximations, we proceed as if the approximations are the true densities. Given that the predicted density is Gaussian, the posterior density is a Gaussian mixture with one term for every possible association at time k. That is, it contains mk plus one terms, where the weight w theta k denotes the probability of association theta k, and p theta k, with subindices k given k, is the posterior density given the measurements up to time k and the association theta k. Note that the equations that I'm about to present were discussed in more detail in the video about the update step for linear and Gaussian models. In several of the upcoming videos, we use this brief accent to indicate that it is the posterior density at time k before we introduce additional approximations. In the nearest neighbor case, this is the Gaussian mixture posterior, assuming that the nearest neighbor predicted density is the true density. The density p brief is never actually computed by the nearest neighbor algorithm, and I've only included it here to motivate the algorithm. Under the above assumptions, the density of xk given theta k is Gaussian. When theta k is zero, its moments are the same as the moments of the predicted density. When theta k is greater than zero, we obtain the moments of p theta k using a simple comma filter update, assuming that z theta k is the object measurement, whereas the unnormalized weight is pd times the predicted likelihood of z theta k divided by the clutter intensity at z theta k. The bottom line with these equations is simply that if the posterior density at time k minus 1 is Gaussian, the posterior at time k is a Gaussian mixture with mk plus 1 terms. This situation is true for both the nearest neighbor and the PDA filters. And the question is, how can we approximate this Gaussian mixture as a Gaussian density? The basic idea behind the nearest neighbor algorithm is to find the most probable hypothesis and ignore all the other hypotheses. That is, the posterior density is computed by assuming that the most likely hypothesis is the true hypothesis. We can describe this procedure in terms of an explicit algorithm. As a first step, we compute the unnormalized weights, w tilde, for all the hypotheses theta k. We can then use these to find the most probable hypothesis by identifying the index theta for which w tilde is maximized. In theory, we really want to maximize the normalized weights, but since the only difference is a proportionality constant, this maximization gives the same result. Given the most probable association, we compute the posterior mean and covariance for that hypothesis and assume that these moments are the true posterior moments. It may be interesting to note that we never actually need to compute the posterior moments for any of the other hypotheses. Of course, once we have computed the posterior moments, we assume that the posterior density is Gaussian with those moments. To visualize what these densities look like, we return to the toy example that we first studied in the video about the conceptual solution to single object tracking. Both the measurements and the state are scalar variables. We have a Gaussian prior at time one, 
and both pi k and g k are assumed linear and Gaussian. Also, both the probability of detection and the clutter intensity are assumed constant within the area of interest. The measurements at the first three time steps are identical to before, but we now consider a longer time sequence and receive two measurements at time four, one measurement at time five, and two measurements at time six. As you can see, at all times we observe one measurement somewhere in an interval from 1.3 to 3, and this will be reflected in the posterior density of our state, and we eventually become convinced that the state is somewhere close to 3. To gain insights into the properties of the nearest neighbor algorithm, we visualize four different densities. The first is the predicted density according to the nearest neighbor algorithm, illustrated in a red point-dashed curve. The second is the exact posterior without any approximations, which is the solid black curve. Please note that it's not generally possible to compute the true posterior, but this toy example is sufficiently small and simple to enable us to do this. The third density is p brief, which is a magenta colored dashed curve. At time one, this density is identical to the exact posterior, since the predicted density is the true predicted density. Finally, we also show the posterior according to the nearest neighbor algorithm, which is the green curve with squares on it. Apart from these densities, the figure also shows the mk plus 1 hypothesis at time k. We do this by plotting the mk measurements and a circle that represents the hypothesis that the object is undetected. In this case, the circle is positioned at the predicted value of zk. The most probable hypothesis is marked in red. At time one, this is the hypothesis that the measurement at 1.7 is an object measurement. The nearest neighbor algorithm therefore acts as if we knew that the measurement at 1.7 is an object measurement. That is, even though all three hypotheses are reasonable, the algorithm ignores the two less probable hypotheses. And this gives rise to an approximation of the posterior that underestimates the uncertainties. At time two, the most likely hypothesis is that the measurement at 1.3 is an object measurement. And here the nearest neighbor approximate the true posterior very well. At time three, we again have two measurements and both appear to be reasonable object measurements. The true posterior is therefore bimodal, whereas the nearest neighbor algorithm approximates it as unimodal by pretending that we know that the measurement at 2.3 is an object measurement. As we proceed, we obtain more measurements between 2.6 and 3, and both the true posterior and the nearest neighbor algorithm become confident that the state is more or less close to 3. Overall, we can see that the nearest neighbor algorithm approximates the true posterior density fairly well, and it would probably also give rise to reasonable state estimates.